This is Twit. This would have been very valuable to the Redcoats. Uh, when it dropped on my <laughs> foot, I realized this is a weapon. This is actually an interesting computer. It's the Ockel Sirius A. And the idea, well, there's a couple of ideas. Uh, they see this as a media playing device. You see it's a wedge, which means if you put it on your desk, you can kind of see the screen. It's actually quite a beautiful screen. Uh, I don't know if you can really tell at home. And Running Windows 10. It's got an Ethernet port as well, which is fantastic. Yeah, isn't that cool? So I'll explain why it's got a full complement of ports. Type-C charging. It isn't a super-fast processor. It's an Atom, but it's quad-core, the XZ processor running at 1.6 gigahertz. It can clock up to 2.56 if needed. Four gigs of DDR3 RAM. There's a Pro version. It's a little more expensive, 100, 100 euros more expensive. That has 8 gigs of RAM. Inside, I've got 64 gigs of storage. Although the Pro version, you could put 128 in. And it does have a micro SD card slot right on the side there. So you could add more storage right there. I think they've got SD, micro SD cards up to 128. Yeah, and now. a fingerprint Maybe reader as well. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Um, that's, the, that's this button on the side here. Right well, like they that. keep on promise, promising us a, uh, a terabyte in, in, uh, in the micro SD sort of form. Isn't that amazing? If somebody's got an 8 terabyte uh, flash drive now, something it's like just that. 4 terabyte. So this is a 6 inch 1080p multi touch display. Uh, of course, it's using the built-in Iris gra or HD graphics from Intel, the 405. Now, that's what's interesting on the back here, full ports. And you can see why they might have HDMI. So this would be a mm. media PC, for yeah. instance. Fanless design, so it's very quiet. You could put it behind the TV, and no one would know it's there. But because it's Windows 10, you could run full Plex. You could you mm -hmm. know, do all sorts of things with it. It also has a full-size display port which I think is kind of interesting. That's for, And yeah. that's the secondary use for this. You could actually use it as your desktop PC. It's got two USB 3.1 ports, type, type A ports. Mm -hmm. So you could have a mouse, a keyboard, a monitor, and this would be your desktop computer that you could then just take with you. Uh, this is gigabit ethernet, so it's very fast. It does have a headphone jack. Uh, Dual band AC, Bluetooth 4.2. Now, the battery is a little anemic for a device of this size. It's about the uh, size of a typical Android battery, 3,500 mm -hmm. milliamp hours. They claim four hours battery life. Uh, Windows 10 is notoriously yeah. choose through battery life. So. You're not going to get four hours, maybe a couple of hours. But I think a lot of the uses for this are envisioned as plugged in. Yeah. It does have, as you can see, a Canon power port, but you can also use USB-C to charge it, and I think that's very nice. Uh, it does have ambient light, accelerometer, gyroscope, magnetometer, the kinds of things you'd expect in a smartphone, and even a five megapixel uh, camera, Skype-style camera. It's on the front, not the back. They should have built a SIM card slot into it. If you could actually use that as your phone as well, that you would know, be quite interesting. I, I really do think that's a more and more on portable devices. I have one of those always on ARM-based uh, Windows right. PCs, the yeah. HP NVX2, and I have the SIM card. And even though it's a slower machine, the great battery life on that mm -hmm. and the wireless connectivity anywhere I go make it the one that I reach for. Yeah. Less so something like this because it isn't connected unless you can get Wi-Fi. It also doesn't have great battery life. I do love the design. It comes in moon silver, meteor gray, and Venus gold, and that's the dog star. That's the serious constellation. Very Passive apt, cooling. Considering our current guest. <laughs> yeah, Canis Major. We have visitors from NASA today. Uh, so, this is the Sirius A. It's their third crowd-funded Indiegogo mini PC. It's good enough, the processor's fast enough, as you can see, to play Minecraft, mm. um, but probably not fast enough to play Fortnite, let's say. Uh, no, yeah. no, I wouldn't have thought so, not with an Atom. Awesome. And I mean, do uh, you really want to play Fortnite? <laughs> screen, <laughs> screen that side. I think it's interesting. In fact, I brought along with me, just to give you an idea of what's going on, uh, some similar products. So this one, uh, as as could figure here is 700 euros, which would be what, um, about $850? Yeah, about that, like that, yeah, and that's Maybe quite a hefty price. It's a lot for to pay is. for this. This thing uh, is the GPD Pocket, also running Windows 10. It's, it's exactly the same microprocessor. This is a full keyboard, and it's less expensive, but it's really designed to be fully you know, portable. It doesn't have all the connectivity, just a USB and a Type C port. Uh, Although that is a, I think that's a mini display port on here. I like this. This keyboard mm. is almost usable. Yeah. And, and it has a little... Uh, it's got the nipple mouse. Yeah. yeah. So I, this is an interesting product and it's less. You know, it's about half the cost. Uh, and then as long as we're that talking... took me back. I used to write fun? articles on, on something very similar. The Scion 5, right? Yeah. 
And I had a 3A for years, which I love. Right. This I've shown this before. This is the Planet Computer's Gemini. Also a, a little less expensive, not as, as inexpensive as the Pocket, but I think about 100 euros less than the Ockel. And this also has a full keyboard, but this is running Android. And I think, and it can, it can they say, run Linux, although I haven't been able to put Linux on there. I'm so quite tempted yet. by that, just for the nostalgia cycle. I just love cycle. it. And, you know, if you, if you remember the Scion, you'll remember uh, the little toolbar it had mm -hmm. uh, down here, right? You can even bring that back with, oh, with appropriate icons in there. Uh, it kind of overlaps the end. That's my Palm 3X with a portable keyboard. I wrote yeah. article after article on those. When they, yes. So this actually has a, a T-Mobile SIM in it, and yep. so it's always connected. You can take phone calls on it, and you can even take phone calls on it closed. They've got a little microphone oh. and the earpiece. So I think that this is an interesting category, and that's what made me think <laughs> about... Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, somebody, some wag. Somebody Alex in the office Gumpel has one of these. Brought remember up that? that? Brought up the, uh, the it's, tin. Remember that? It's, it's so sweet, but that, unfortunately the kids didn't like it. That phone had the lifespan of a mayfly. Microsoft killed that, I think, in three months. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was... <laughs> it was a total flop. But, you know, when you take it out... It's kind of neat. I kind of yeah. wish if it was if it was more than a single use device, I think it would have been a success. But it wasn't a full smartphone, and that was no. the limitation. No. So I mention all this. Uh, we're talking about the Ockel specifically, but I think for some reason this is a hot category right now. By the way, speaking of hot, it's getting kind of warm, and that's why you want the aluminum case. Uh, okay. It does generate a little bit of heat coming well, out of this. You see. This is being is being touted as sort of the next stage forward, and that you get a small device that you can just plug stuff into, and you can right. run Windows on it. Now, Microsoft tried that with the Windows Phone system, and HP brought out a, a sort of atom-powered phones, which you could then plug Samsung in. Samsung does as well. Yeah, right? but I haven't seen much take up of them than within no. in the industry. You know, it's one of those things that sounds great when you're selling the device to the accounts department, but in actual practice. It's, you know, I, I, a bit iffy about it, but I do like the design and having that level, I mean, compare the, the level of connectivity you've got in that to a MacBook Pro, you know, it's just bounds better. Sound quality is fairly good on this as well, given the size. You want to play a little Candy Crush saga? I've sure. never played Candy Crush. Okay, get ready. This is going to be your <laughs> first time. It is a very sickeningly, dare I say, sickeningly sweet game. Um, but you see, it's it's you know it looks pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, just you don't sound impressed. Well, is it just like you've got to group the objects together, press and they? No, I'm talking about the computer, oh, not the, the game. Oh, right. I was going to say. No, no, no. The actual computer itself. <laughs> yeah. My only negative on this is the price. That it, uh, it is. And a lot that of does money. not include a keyboard. It, but if you could think of it as a media device, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, or a device that you might want to have as a kind of like a NUC, uh, a small computer that you use on the desktop and then pocket yeah. as you travel around. That's kind of how they're pitching the Oculus. You're Ocul right. It is a very a. expensive bit of kit. And yeah. I think it needs a SIM card. It feels expensive. It feels oh, expensive. Oh, yes. I mean, if the build quality feels yeah. good, and your yeah. toes obviously didn't really appreciate getting it. You know, oh, it really hurt. <laughs> I dropped it off. And by the way, it survived the fall, so that's also... Yes, that's also always encouraging. Uh, I, I'll be honest. Before you get any of these pocket devices, I would wait and see what Microsoft does. Paul Therat has been talking about this for some time. The rumors are surfacing. Microsoft's working on something called the Andromeda, mm -hmm. responding to this exact need that you just described. But what will be unique about the Andromeda will be about the size of a small smartphone, but when you open it up, the screen stretches across the hinge. So the full screen is mm. the size of a phone doubled, opened up. Yeah. And that, to me, is very interesting. We'll see what Microsoft does with this. Clearly, this is a category people feel has some legs. We've seen these for a long time. Remember the uh, Toshiba, Le what was it called? The, the libretto. The libretto, yeah. the libretto, right? The little computer. Yeah, you see, I mean, the twin screen thing is good on, on one level, but it does jack the cost up considerably because you've got to you know, run the same things and the Hertz battery life. So I'm going to be very interested to see how this works because, you know, the Surface and the Surface Pro are, are pretty good tablets and, uh, and laptops. So we'll see if they, can get, if they can get it right. That should be good. I almost feel like when I compare all of these that the, the, the pocket device that is running Android is the most suitable. Yeah. Because Android is designed for a screen that size. And, and so it low kind power of, or, yeah, yeah. And it kind of makes sense. So I don't know how desktop how well desktop operating systems will migrate uh, to this smaller form factor. I'm it, sure Microsoft would love them to, but I too am skeptical yeah. on this one. We'll watch with interest.